wasn't looking good, but clearly with better drops coming into the FNCS. Low, Papa Luka Bevies, you know the loot they have, you know their aggression so far in the game. Up against Malibuka and Thomas wow. HD, Bevies making quick work of Malibuka. Thomas HD also going down on the ones to Pablo Wingu. I mean, this is looking like major two, week two qualifier Pablo Wingu and Bevies. Where Vico First lost pink, so that's all up to him to just solo clutch this one out. He has a few materials to keep it going, but his HP pool is dropping. He's sliding into other boxes. That'll be Daxi. But that's a lot of match to work with. Even still, though, look how easy it is for the guys on height. On height, it's popping off, but in the mid ground, Revscar takes it straight to town. The to Blaha and Mixon Trippin follows afterwards and confirms the last 50 HP. Pablo Wingu seeing chaos says, I want more, but on all sides of the map, they're going for the chop down. Might not just have it yet. Pablo's just doing that damage. Fabius is up there, too, doing the best he can to make sure these guys don't have it for free. Trippin finally going down to Chicho and Trulex. Axe Force edited it down, 130, Ooh. hits the ground. Pablo Wingle Bevy's healthy inside the zone, still fighting, get two. Unbelievable from Pablo Wingu and Bevy's, but a hard fight all the way through. <laughs> what have I just seen? And it takes down Pablo Wingu. It's just Bevy's left with no materials. He has a slur, but just needs to hit some shots. What? Finally picks up Podicide, and that will be enough match to keep him in the game just a bit longer. Final players in the air, no, it's True Luck coming in. I don't know, we're on the backside, one HP, can he make it? No! Bevies! But Blaha and Mixon, they want to put an end to it right now. Running right in, pinching from both angles. Unfortunately, Mixon's gone down, that leaves Blaha Ooh. to fend for himself. But it's something he's accustomed to, he already picks Ooh. up one and picks up the other as well. Blaha is not to be messed with. Just a chance, a gun, a vision for him and destruction in front of him. Two different duels on one side, 185 on the other. Malibuka stopped, and Thomas as well. This man is the ultimate machine. Oh, Bevies oh, can't be slowed down. But what an end it was. Python Fisher and Mustache still on height, and there looked like the team set up perfectly. Seti missing Kami desperately. Can't even get moments to get his shields off. Finally, will hide behind this metal wall. But this is really not the kind of game they would have wanted. They would have wanted to be here together. Now he just has to make it happen as a solo. Let's see Grippe on the other side. The last team. Kind of see them on the backside. It's two different solos. It's Slove and Seti. Seti absolutely ripped apart. Mustache has all the angles. Mustache doing exactly what he's paid to do. Get a limbs. And now there's just three more standing in his way for their first win here in the FNCS. They're blacksmiths right now, letting the metal actually heat up and then absolutely cool down. <laughs> Mustache is there to clang it down again. So everyone else will just melt down. Mustache will find them first though. Future trying to heal off. Mustache on the backside. <laughs> Big beat 180. <laughs> what is this man on? And again, he can just end the game himself. We don't need heals when you have Mustache playing like that. The clutch, the solo clutch that we saw there the from Pablo. And again. And last game we saw Shakos and Skyrim had better drops, but it didn't really matter at all. It was all about the weapon play in the end, and this time round, it looks like he'll be in their favor. Bevy's down, and so it's up to Pablo Wingo to do the spectacular. It's not out of his possibilities, but it's certainly not going to be easy as they come pinching from both sides, he'll mantle up, but it's no. them lazy inevitable pickaxe. Guys are Slurp Samuel. It's crazy. Hold on a minute. What's bro cooking? 9 HP. Might be overcooking, but so far, still tasting good. Wait a minute, Shia, look. I don't know, if he gets surviving... DK ain't gonna match. Wait, Shia, wait, 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 wait. Garbo looks like the truth right now. Wait. One shot, two! Oh. Oh. What? Oh. Jocko, are you kidding? The 1v2! Oh. We went that way. That's just perfect. Listen. I gotta apologize. I was not familiar with your game. I was not familiar with Yarko's game at all. <laughs> this might be a bit more of a difficult 1v2 to, to, to handle. Ooh. Wraparound shot from the deal. Cone in the box. Wait. Invites him in. 91. I'm sad. <laughs> Just because I know for a fact if he had taken the deal down and gotten the knock, he was getting a 1v2. Like, 100%. I saw it. Like, if he had gotten the deal down there instead of 3 HP, 100% the 1v2 happens. Buildings, it's everyone going on the same side, congested on the left through a half bounce back. And it's Thomas HD and Malabuka. We're going to be knocking and stress testing people on their boxes, making sure they're not only aware of the rotate, but the danger that's residing in front of them as well. It's going to be tough once again, though, as Malabuka fumbles on this one. Not going to be enough time to actually pick him up. I mean, 
good cost conversion on points, but in terms of survivability for the rest of the game, it's just Thomas HD now. Right now, the focus for Thomas has to be salvaging as many points out of this game as possible. He's been so dominant this season, but when he's getting big chunks of damage taken out of him like that, there isn't really much this young goat can do. What's dominance to a, or what's dominance to a mammoth pistol is the question, because it takes your HP down. Unorthodox zone, and now we're back inside that winter biome. We're going up against glaciers. Yeah, Savage doing a really good job at surviving right now, but he's gonna have to elevate. He's gonna have to get up and switch the layers, go down once again, stay on top of getting refreshes, and no one's living. We saw a good treasure was off. He's gonna be going down to Chicho. Dias gonna be not gonna be able to make it in the zone either. Vico doing a really good job to get here by himself, but it's cost him so many mats, and you need about triple to get past this next spot. He gets found out, down to just eight more bills. Turn that over to five, as he needs to stay alive. Just tough for the man right now, but he can delay as much as possible. Yeah, and that accelerator shotgun, he's gonna hold it out. If you can hit a shot, you'll start running a bit faster. That would be ideal, even if it is a small little tag, and that's all he needs right there. Now we'll sprint his way on in, and you can see him just zooming through the right side. Everything working out perfectly for Vico. There is, he's looking for even more nice little plays, trying to take anybody out. Savage, though, climbing towards the skies at the cost of a deal. He has height, and it's a solo showdown up top, and he has the shots. Build though on defense for Shake as the Savage goes towards the right side. Siphon's not his, he has the splash just to keep staying alive, editing down and going straight through sports for this elimination, but it's not gonna be possible as Shakos survives. Shakos hiding deep in the storm. And now we'll try and make the journey back in. It's Podesai in there, in the safe zone. And Sfi and Vacan just waiting to try close out this game. They haven't got many materials, but they have the best setup to do it. The only duo remaining, and they know where both players are, need to chop Shakos down, and they need to get it done with quickly. They got no mats, this might just be it. One down, Potosai gets the siphon. Potosai has the mats. His enemies out of absolute gas. There's nothing for him to do. A turn around and it's enough with the beam. Ski V could not. Pablo Ingo Bevy, Sky Dune, Shakos, round number four. Let's keep it going. Pablo electing to go all the way down. Gets the SMG, not gonna fool around this time. Looking up, Bevy's eliminated. Just him now, no materials, and it's done again. I feel like Shakos knows now. It's not about thinking, it's not about strategy. It's about get that weapon down and then get aggressive and go. All this time delayed is just enough for him to get absolutely eliminated off spawn. No max. No materials. Having to pop this slot. 17 HP, he has to be careful. Can't hide on Bush go for the split. Doesn't really matter though. They have to collapse on someone, and that's Axe Force and Roban. It's gonna be a force here. Can they break through the walls? A few beams on the left side, but it's Rashad taken down. Two slurps left in his inventory. Hot on Bush just has one. This has to be a big clutch. Adam Bush, the king of making nothing or something out of nothing. And he certainly has nothing really to work with here. Just has to mantle up. Notice his players all around him, constantly spinning around, reacting to them. Sound kill cues, dodging and weaving through these different builds and edits. Now, a little bit of reprieve as he has time to make decisions to let the zone eclipse him. He's looking to shine past it though. One wall down, the second one choosing not to break, go around. After that, there's 30 HP really to work with. Inside. Now just three different teams left. Seti down low with Kami. They've made good so far, but it's cost them so much on HP. They're just absolutely battered and tattered out in this position. This zone was so hard for them to get any sort of refresh, but again, to survive this long is what they're best at. Finally, gonna be taken down, but look who it is to sweep in and win the game. I'm not Meanwhile, Adam Bush. Okay. One, oh. two, and a box. No. Hello! Oh. And he's down. Anas is just an absolute powerhouse, a gargoyle that cannot be moved from this position. He has no match either, so this is his final placement. He can go straight for goals, his box. Looking for the next chance to do damage. A 2v1 as these guys will absolutely solidify this game. Looks like a vacation for them because they're smiling. They're feeling good on this beach. Anas and Strap for a win. The first thing in the morning is Skydune, Pablo, Bevis, and Shakos going straight for some type of loot, a drop, and some action. Bevy's missing a pistol. Shaco's getting a chest. Uh, wrap it up already and ask for it to go because Pablo Wing goes down and Bevy's will follow soon. Yeah, it looks like the end for this duo today. A big damage being dealt from Bevy's. But unfortunately, not much after that. 4 2 on the day here at the secluded spire. And so as long as you're keeping yourself in and around 15th, you've got a good shot. At the Globals. <laughs> he need out, and Misha put He'll do it. He needs Seti to make it all the way through 
towards the next portion of the game. That ramp up makes it so that Jarko's not going to be able to see him. Pickaxing down, though, he sticks to it. Gets him inside the box, turns around. Where is he? <laughs> inside all the builds. He'll leave, and that distraction close by might actually make people look at Jarko. Said he actually falls right in front of Cammy. Chasing still, and he goes down. But they don't really get much out of it either, to be fair, so. This is huge. First place over at six, who's teetering on seventh right now. Whoa. Destiny for Skvi, who doesn't have a wall behind him. How does he even know? What a perfect slide in. He found the weakness. This man can see the Kryptonite. And after that, I don't even know where his dual partner is, but if I'm in, I'm running. I'm just, that LM was nuts. Clean. <laughs> that was so clean. For the day. Look who it is up above. Kiri and Ping. I said they like to play for height, and it's taken them six games to do it. And they have to just hold on. First moving can be tough, but they should be able to get through it. Second moving, they have to start worrying about all the potential teams that want to take their height. Arizumi is still going on that low ground and stopping Gawins from moving forward. Daisy put aside, though. They found a glitch in the Matrix. They got all the way towards the front side. Past the chaos that Finyayan has to deal with. Past the chaos that Moneymaker's lost in. He doesn't even know where to build. He has so many mats, so much time, but he's coming to the pressure. Has to drop a splash. No! The heals, the slurp, the builds. Too much to handle. Swizzy and Putrick, though, this is where they wanted to be taking height of Kiri and Ping. And it was second moving where they really looked for it. And now they can just hold on, you think, at least for a couple more minutes. Blaha and Mixon aren't together alive, but Blaha is still kicking it here as a solo. Baha's just about 20 points behind, so if he continues this clutch, it'll be huge. That's his last box, though. No more bats, so he needs a miracle. Focusing on some of the other solos alive, too. Nebs popping. Malabuka by himself as well. About 100 points attached from first place, but he wants to make it and hold on to that top 10. Seventh overall right now. Waiting for Nebs to move. He can't afford to wait in that zone, though, so he's got to go first. Six more builds. One shot takes him out, and he's somehow still alive. Just what available. Just nothing available. Mammoth to the head. Follow through on Potosa. And he gets the loot as well. Now has to try and get back in the zone. The Nebs misses Ooh. there, but he has to keep fighting. He will go down. And it's Vico waiting for Nebs to walk into the zone, but he has to worry <laughs> about ping in front of him. And there's another duo waiting there as well. Vico desperately trying to build up. Wow, clean build to get up two jumps, and he's already on a safety of low ground. And his aim is magnetic. His decision's fast, electric right now, back and forth. This man is not hesitating on decisions. Doesn't matter as Putrick and Swizzy pass the 300-point line, pass through first place, and look straight to day two for more dominance.